Hi guys, welcome to another Radiator Guard install. This one is by GV, it's for the 2014 to 2019 Suzuki Vstrom DL1000. It, though, is made for all sorts of different bikes, GSs, you name it, they're all basically the same sort of install. So I've got quite a bit to say about this, the quality, and you might be surprised. It's by GV, yes. But, first of all, it comes with instructions. What a bonus. This is stainless steel. Makes it a little heavier, a little stronger. Yeah, I think I would have preferred it in aircraft grade aluminum like the EvoTech is. Second, let's go to the instructions. The instructions are a little bit confusing in that they reference two different rad guards and don't tell you the difference between them. So there's a bit of confusion there. Let's go to the actual items. Yes, you get the rad guard. Uh, some disappointing areas for me, which you don't really find out when you're uh, buying these, is that uh, the bottom of the rad guard is held on with cable ties or zap straps. Now, to me, that is not high-class, high-quality engineering that you expect from a company like GV. Uh, the EvoTech came with four uh, attachment points. This comes with two at the top, and at the bottom, there are two little holes, and I'll show you a little later on, two little holes here to thread these two weirdly colored cable ties or zap straps through. Second, you have some adhesive tape here with sponge backing that you are going to be putting on around the outside, which doesn't smack to me of quality either. It's going to be hot and then cold and then hot. It's going to go through cycles. How well is this adhesive going to last and how brittle is this zap strap or cable tie going to get after hundreds of cycles. We'll see, I guess. The other parts of this is, this is an install. Uh, it's a little more complicated than the Kawasaki. You actually have to take body parts off the bike. So I will go through it and uh, do that with you. Okay, let's get cracking. So as you can see, here are the instructions. And they tell you that they're going to give you 800 mils of uh, this tape here. And you're to cut it into two 400 millimeter strips. So let me do that. Once I've done that, say the instructions, then I'm going to lay the two adhesive backs on the back. This doesn't make much sense to me because I've cut mine to my two 400 mil strips. But then when I go down to the radiator, you will notice that this strip is far too long to be nailed on down to the side here. So I'm not quite sure what we're looking at here. So it turns out it is 170 mils per side. Okay, I have one fitted already down here to speed things up. I'm just going to show you putting the second one on. It's just peel the backing off. Backing comes off very simply. You've got this checkerboard pattern. That's the adhesive side. Now all you're gonna do is place it over the edge, run it down and make sure that it doesn't block any of the grills. All right, with that done, let's move on to the next step, which is going to be hanging these two off the top. Okay, folks, in order to get the rad guard in, you're going to have to take off the two small side panels. I've already taken off the left-hand side or port side panel, and I'm now going to take off the starboard one. Before you start, you're going to need, just like last week with the EvoTech, you're going to need a number five Allen key wrench for the V-Strom. You're looking at that hex bolt up there. Here we go. So it's just going to come off and it's got a little way to come out. It's got a rubber grommet on it and it's just this one bolt. It's kind of a nifty system. It bayonets in at the front. So you just take this out. There we go. And this loosens, push forward and comes off. Bolt falls out as well. Okay guys, in order to hang the radiator guard off, you need to attach these to the top of the Vistrom's radiator and the way to do that is to use a number 10 socket on one side and a number 10 millimeter crescent wrench on the other and as you can see possibly through one or both of these cameras uh, this is the only side the left side that a socket will fit in uh, on the other side you're going to need to use a crescent wrench which you can see right there and these hangers are right up at the top there so uh, I'm working them off right now I'm going to try to get them off what I can't understand is why GV did not put a little attachment point on the bottom instead of those tacky uh, zip ties or cable ties. Uh, because there is a ready-made attachment point on the bottom of the Vstrom right here where the radiator actually attaches to the engine block. So it's a bit fiddly, as you can see. 
And getting these out is uh, a matter of small movements. I could turn the forks, but if I do that, you won't be able to see. So I'll take the pain for you. Okay, to the other side. That is one off. There seems to be limited space on the other side. A crescent wrench is pretty well all you are able to fit in there because I think of an electrical connection or a thermostat. So, okay, just so you know, there is a washer, metal. Okay, to put in the cable ties or the zip ties, you are looking at these corner very, very bottom corners of the rectangle of the radiator, and there's a little orifice there. Well done, engineers, you found it. Like I say, I still think it would have been better just to have tied it straight to this bolt here. And I'm going to zip tie mine in like this, so that I can put this through the red and have it go back, and not have this chunky bit, the end, the gripper, whatever that is, the ratchet, sticking out. So I'm going to do that on both sides. I'm doing that before I put the rad guard on. They say to do it afterwards, but I'm, I'm thinking that hanging the rad guard down and threading these through and going back would be much easier once you, instead of having the rad guard hanging there in front of you. Okay, to hang the rad guard on. And it seems to fit very nicely right around the rubber grommet, so I think we've got that right. Just going to take this and hold it there by threading it through. Okay, so that's one side sort of loosely hanging. It turns out it's quite hard to get the thread of the original hanging screw back in. Okay, in order to get the bolts back and threaded again, you will Notice, at least I did on mine, that the rad will drop a few millimeters and you'll have to kind of move the rad, the whole rad around a little bit. It is only attached by this one over here, so particularly on the left-hand side there's some movement. You're going to have to move it around in order to get the screw to re-thread back into the hole. A little fiddly. Okay, that's the left side done. Let's see if I can't uh, get the right side done. You can see it a lot more clearly on the... There we go. This is threading in nicely, so nice. And before I go any further and tighten them up, what I'm going to do is pull the zap strap through the top hole in the rad guard and back through the bottom hole. And I'll just sort of tighten them up a little bit. But not all the way, just to make sure that I have a little more uh, play if I need it. Same on the other side, and then it's just a matter of cinching up. Remember, this side you can use the ratchet, on the other side you don't. I put Loctite on my screws so uh, that they don't come out. Uh, they were in quite tight, so I will hand tight them. Fairly tight, but not crazy. And then on the other side, the right hand side, make sure again that you tighten that cable tie up as reasonably tight as you can. And then once you've got that in position, it's, it's definitely secure. It's very nice. It's kept off the radiator. Hopefully these won't burn up too much and uh, soften, loosen, or crack. But if they do, I know I'll replace them with black ones because they just look better. All right. Now to put the side panels back on, and I'll see you in a tick. Don't forget, before you put the side panels on, to trim the cable ties or zap straps, whatever you call them, off because they will be hidden behind the panel once that happens. The GV radiator guard is $135 Canadian from Fort 9. Not a bad product, probably worth the money. Although I do feel they should have included a tab down here rather than these cheesy zap straps or cable ties. It is very, very sturdy, very well in. Probably it's just fine. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, Thumbs down, it's all good, and back at you with some more product updates on both the Kawasaki and the Vstrom coming up. Once again, thanks for watching everyone. If this is the first time you've watched, please consider subscribing. I do product reviews, motorcycle reviews, off-road and on-road vlogs, as well as tours. Don't forget to follow me on social media, that's Instagram, Facebook and Twitter, and to like, and especially, I'm begging you here folks, subscribe. This is the Blue Mopple Rider. Out. Now, if I were going to mount this, and I am,